So we can just write down the solution. It's an oscillator, and its solution is that Q as a function of time is given by what? Well, it's given by a cosine time dependence, cos of omega naught t plus some phase shift phi times an amplitude Q naught. That's the solution to that oscillator equation. Where what? Well, I have to tell you what Q naught, omega naught, and phi are, and the important one is omega naught. Omega naught is not arbitrary at all. Omega naught is 1 over the square root of LC. And Q naught is um, an amplitude. And phi is a phase. And these depend on initial conditions. And remember how I um, set the circuit up a number of videos ago now. I started this oscillator off with a top half of the circuit that I'm not drawing anymore. And I used that top half of the circuit to load this capacitor up with a certain charge Q that was positive on this, on this plate. That was my initial condition. And that initial condition is equivalent to saying, well, I picked how much charge I put on here. That means I picked Q naught. And I chose an initial condition such that if I take my time equals zero to be the moment when I flipped that switch and started the oscillation going, that's like choosing phi, the phase, to be zero. Which is to say that if I make a graph of the solution to this equation, the solution to the equation that, um, that I am describing looks as follows. If I plot as a function of time, and I plot Q, Q starts out here at Q naught, and it oscillates. I'll draw one period of the oscillation. This period is 2 pi over, square, over omega naught. which is 2 pi times the square root of LC. And after one period, Q naught started out positive, went to 0, became negative, went back to 0, and returned to its starting positive value. This, this, this is how Q of t changes with time. And for the particular solution that we've described in four chapters several videos ago, um, Q naught was determined by how strong our battery was with which we loaded the capacitor with charge initially. And we arranged things so that give, we arranged things so that our story started with Q at its maximum value Q naught, which means we chose phi to be zero. So this is the solution that we've been describing. Now what about the current? So um, the current I I we saw was minus dQ dt. And so if I differentiate this, that's going to give me, if it, well, differentiating this is going to give me minus Q naught omega naught. So that gives me minus Q naught omega naught times sine of omega naught t plus phi. And, um, but I forgot about this minus sign. This minus sign, I get a minus from differentiating the cos, and I get a minus from here, so actually this is a plus. And we're going to call this combination q naught omega naught, we're going to call this i naught. So I naught is Q naught omega naught. And um, uh, for later use, since omega naught is 1 over root LC, that means I naught is equal to Q naught over root LC. We'll use that later. Um, and so I can, on the same graph as before, I can plot how I depends on time, how the current depends on time. And when I do that, the current starts out 0 because the sine starts at 0. 
My phase phi is zero because I've chosen initial conditions with no phase shift phi. So my current starts out zero and rises to some maximum value. after a quarter period, so it goes like this. Then it has its minimum value here, and then it goes to zero again. And this height here, this is I naught, and this then is I of t. So this is like me plotting x of t and v of t on the same graph for an oscillator. Um, for a mechanical oscillator, here I'm plotting Q of t and I of t on the same graph. When Q is at its maximum, there's no current. When the current is at its maximal value, there's no charge on the capacitor. And this oscillation repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. I'm not going to draw it further, but I've just drawn you one period of oscillation. It will keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. And this, then, is the solution to the differential equations I get by applying my 802 rules for how to turn this LC circuit into a differential equation. And then I solve this differential equation just the same way you solve any oscillator equation. And I think about what my initial conditions were when I set this circuit up. And that tells me that I picked a Q naught by how strong my battery was, the battery with which I used to charge the capacitor. And I chose phi to be zero. And there we go.